All right, guys, uh, this video is to explain how Molex pin and socket crimp connectors go together and how to use the associated tools. Um, the video is a little blurry because I have a zoomed way in so we can see nice and close. So hopefully it gets clear when I bring it closer, like so. And it does. Okay, so this is your crimp tool here. Um, this crimp has two dies, an A size and a B size. Uh, with these pins, we're going to be using the A size, not the B size. Um, so this is a ratcheting crimper, so the tighter you squeeze, the more it ratchets. When it's all the way tight, it will finally release and then open up. Uh, it also has a manual release in case you get it too tight. You can push, if, if you need to manually release, you can push this down and then it will release. Um, for the wire size that's in that box, you can probably just run the crimp all the way down tight. For larger wires, sometimes you need to release it a little prematurely to keep from breaking the wires. Um, this right here is one of the pins here, and you see this pin has two different sections here. Uh, it's got a outer section and then an inner section. Uh, the inner section is what's going to grab the actual wire. The outer section grabs a hold of the edge of the jacketing of the wire to provide some strain relief. Um, when you load the pin into the crimp tool, you're going to load it in opposite of the die number. So, so this, this side here shows your dies, your A and B. So we're going to load the pin in from this side. So we're going to release our crimp, and then we're going to start to close it and close it partially here, like this. Then my pin is going to get inserted such that the open side of the pin, which is seen here, is going to go into the closed side of the crimper die, like so. And it's going to slide down into here until the edge of the pin rests on the crimper. You can then squeeze the crimper a couple more clicks closed, not enough to bend it, but just enough to hold the pin into place. Um, now when we look at this, if you look very carefully, you can see where the pin actually stops at when it's being inserted into the tool. And then if you look at the back side here, you see the back of the pin and you can see the open side of the pin is facing up towards the closed side of the crimp connector. Um, and if you look here, it's it's pretty flush with the edge of the tool. As long as that's flush with the edge of the tool, you know your pin's in the right place. Um, if, it's, if the end is sticking out of the tool, then your pin is in too far, and you'll actually crimp too much of the pin and damage the pin. All right, so we now have our pin loaded into our tool. We'll set that down for a second. We will then take our example wire here. We're going to strip it back. Now, for these pins, you need very little copper exposed, less than a quarter inch. So I'm going to strip this about this far. Uh, and you'll see if I compare this to a crimp pin so you get an idea for size, you notice you can see that my jacketing is stripped back a little less than the crimp size of the pin itself and the crimp portions of the pin and that's all it needs to be so once I have this stripped very important make sure that you twist this wire up very very tight you want the wire nice and tight together like this that way it inserts easy into the tool and you get a good solid crimp if your wire is all sprawled out uh, it's gonna be hard to get in the pin and it won't crimp solid. so twist nice and tight and we're gonna take our tool with our pin already inserted we're going to now insert our wire into the pin and we're going to get it. What we want is we want our wire in there and then we want to just put the edge of, we want the jacketing to just start into the pin. Uh, it doesn't need to go very far in there, just the edge of the jacketing inside of the crimp tool. Then while holding that in place, we will then start to squeeze. Once we squeeze a couple clicks, it now holds everything into place solid can take our hand off and we continue to squeeze in, and we're going to crimp this down all the way until the tool releases. So this is as tight as it goes and then as we release, now the tool opens up, our wire comes out and now if you look nice and close here, you can see that the jacketing of the wire is crimped within the first 
first crimp section, then the copper is crimped within the second crimp section here. Uh, and once it's crimped, you can give it a tug. It should be nice and full and tight. It should be very solid. All right. So we now have a successful crimp. So now we now we'll show you inserting it into the connector. Here's an example of a connector that's on your box. Uh, this is the outside of the box. This is the inside of the box. Uh, so this connector right here, uh, wires go in from the back side. Um, I've given you a drawing that shows you the pinouts. The pins are very, the wire labels are very hard to read on this connector. So follow the drawing that I've provided with you. It shows you pin numbers and wire colors associated with those pins. Uh, so the pin's going to go in from the back side of the connector, like so. So if I'm going to put the pin in this slot right here, so it'll just slide in here, and you notice it'll slide away pretty easy, and then it gets a little tight. So once you get it inserted mostly, then you can use this insertion tool, which you'll see has a notch on one side. The notch is to allow it to sit around the wire without damaging our wire. So we put our notch around our wire. This will slide down to here and and it'll go right into the edge of this connector and it should pop the wire. You'll feel a little click as the wire seats in place. So once you feel the click, then you can give a little tug test. You might not even need this insertion tool. Sometimes the wires go in nice and easy, but in case you need it, this helps from damaging your wire, but also gets your pin inserted fully. So once the pin's in there, you can give that a tug test, and that should be nice and solid in there, okay? As long as that's nice and solid, we're good to go. Uh, if you have other pins in there, if you then look at the front side where the pin is, all the pins should be pretty flush in there. Um, if your pin is not sticking out as far as the rest, it's probably not inserted all the way in correctly. Uh, the final thing we'll demonstrate is extracting a pin for a broken pin, a damaged pin, whatever. Uh, so this is the extractor tool for your pins. Notice it's just an open sleeve. This is a spring-loaded device. So basically to extract a pin, this goes straight around from the front side of the connector. You put this over your pin and you want to get it aligned nice and even on your around the center of your pin. And then you basically just push in and as you could see the wire the pin popped right out wire and all nice and easy all right that's extracting and inserting and crimping pins